Oh no, go ahead, walk around. Dude, we should film you like at home. There I am at home. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Oh my gosh, some people would call this <laughs> quite a collection. Quite a collection, Jake. Thanks. I'm pretty excited about it. <sighs> this used to be my office, uh, and slowly became my office with plants, and then slowly became the plants room with a small office, <laughs> and uh, has now turned into a <laughs> complete plant room. No office. Hello plant friends, my name is Jimmy, I'm a doctor and tropical plant hobbyist in LA and this channel is about plants. So I recently was able to visit my friend Jake's place. Jake is keep your plants on underscore LA on Instagram. I'm sure a lot of you guys who are watching this are already following him because he has amazing, amazing plants and also, you know, super friendly super passionate guy. You know, if you're not following him already, definitely give him a follow. I was able to go to his place for three hours. I mean, <laughs> you know, three hours. And I got two hours of footage. Obviously we're not gonna watch two hours all at once, but we were able to talk about a lot of topics. And then also we spent a lot of time really delving into his plant collection. So we're gonna call this the Jake series, um, um, unless I come up with another name <laughs> as I go. But this first episode is going to be about light and humidity. Okay, so let's just see what Jake has to say and let's see what his light setup is. Uh, but it's, uh, it's a good plant room. Yeah, it's got really good, you can see we're here. Really yeah, you have good. a lot of light. Yeah, good morning light in here. Uh, the light sort of tones down a little bit around, probably around one or two in terms of the directness, but it still gets really bright indirect light for the afternoon. So these two shelves against the window are where I put some of the more sun-loving plants. And then these plants, you know, these shelves here that don't get really much natural light at all. I've got a lot of grow lights going. I get normally get a lot of questions about what light recommendations. Totally. So first and foremost, I think nothing rivals good old fashioned Nash. sunlight. Yep. Um, so, you know, sunlight is always best. Uh, I have a combination of a few different grow lights here. Above my Monstera is a Soltec light uh, from Soltec Solutions. I really, really like their grow lights a lot. I think that they, from an aesthetic standpoint, they, they kind of look like normal lights. Yeah. Like this Monstera couldn't be happier. On the shelves, I have two different kinds of lights. Both are from Sun Systems. Um, they're called Sun Blaze. So at the top of the shelves is their LED lights. Frankly, I would love to use those on all of the shelves, but yeah. they are they're really expensive. Uh -huh. um, so for the rest of the shelves, I supplement with bulbs, just like fluorescent like type, LCD or bulbs. yeah. And then the one that I have right over here. And in, in the shelf here are Easy Bright. Uh, I think now Easy Bright changed their name to Bright House, H A U S. I like their lights a lot. I think that they're good uh, for, you know, just having like a nice round light. They don't they don't cover as much as I like. Um, the ones that you see a lot of people use from them are the purple ones. Yeah. I'm not a purple light guy. I, I had a bunch of purple lights in here before. Yeah. And uh, my house is starting to look like the red light district at night. <laughs> um, so finally, Bright House, or you know, formerly known as Easy Bright, just came out with you know both a, a cool white and a warm white bulb. So I have those in there. When you have as many plants as I do, you know, just a, a little round bulb like that isn't doesn't really provide all that much. So there are a few points that I want you guys to you know really appreciate. One, as, as Jake mentions uh, in that clip himself, is that his lights are supplemental. Even without all the extra lights that he put inside his room, his room is very, very well lit. I did put Amazon links to all of his uh, light products that he recommends um, in the description below. So now is probably as good an opportunity or time as any for me to share a little about my setup. Um, I really don't do that many plant tours or house tours or plant halls just because 
I, f I feel like there's a lot of them out there for you guys to watch already on YouTube. So I'm trying to provide something different. But, you know, whereas Jake puts a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of resources into his setup, I feel like I'm, I'm a little bit of the other end of the spectrum where I try to be as practical, as economical as I can. I, I, you know, I have like 24 hour shifts, I work a lot, and then I have, you know, <laughs> YouTube editing <laughs> to do. Uh, so I really try to lean towards the economic and, and practical side where I, I don't have to tend for my plants you know, as, as often as, as other people. I guess some people would call me a bad plant parent. <laughs> so the only light supplementation that I do are with LED bulbs, right? So I try to find LED bulbs that are between 5,000 to 6,500K, which sort of is close to, to, I guess, daylight or normal light, outdoor light spectrum, I, I think. And then I also try to find the bulbs that are high in lumens or intensity. Um, I did put a link to an example of those bulbs and the bulbs that I currently use uh, in the description as well. And basically the bulbs that I would recommend are about you know 6,500 uh, K and as close as you can get to 1.5 lumens, right? So, so you want it like very bright and, and very intense, right? So so if your guests, you know, who are visiting your place aren't going like, oh my goodness, you know, holy bejeebus, that's, what are you doing, man? Or, you know, they're like, oh my eyes, my eyes, right? If they're not doing that, then you may want to, you know, up the intensity and brightness of your supplemental lights a little bit, a little bit more. <laughs> All right, so the next thing that we're going to go into is humidity, right? So, Jake? I think the, the secret to my success in here uh, is humidity. Uh, and yeah. So humidity, we have the humidifiers off right now so that they aren't worrying. <laughs> you know, fogging up the area, but uh, I'm a huge fan of these Lavoite uh, humidifiers. Yeah, people people love the Lavoite humidifiers. Yeah, they're, they're really good. They, they have good tank capacity, so I don't have to change them quite as often, but I, I, I have to change them a lot. I, I spend a lot of time changing humidifier waters. Those two are my mist humidifiers, and then I also have a console humidifier going that's, let's call it an evaporative, you know, whole house humidifier. So, so in this room, you have what? How many humidifiers? Three. Three, okay. Yeah, I have the whole Those house two. humidifier, which kind of, you know, does this evaporative humidifier, and then I've got the two over there. Depending on where you are in the room, these two shelves, because the humidifiers are right there, tend to tend to even out, you know, during the day, they bottom out around 62 or 65% humidity. Um, and then kind of towards the back of the room, I try and keep it at least above 55%. You know, as I've, you know, gotten further into the hobby, I've gotten more and more interested in plants that need higher levels of humidity. Yeah, so. I think that's the trend a lot of people... <laughs> It, it, it is, towards, and I think right? the, the mistake that I see people get is they get these plants that are, you know, rainforest plants, you know, throw them in a, an apartment, you know, in Southern California here, yeah, where, yeah. where our ambient humidity is, you know, at best 40%, yeah. and, uh, and, and think the plants are going to thrive. So I started augmenting kind of my setup here with these, you know, I don't think they're the most attractive, uh, you know, these plastic covered you know, what I call kind of my greenhouse shelves, but they've made a big difference in, in plants that need tremendous amounts of humidity, like the ant fern in there, or, you know, some of the more tender begonias really, really thrive in these shelves. They've, they've been a good addition. And then, uh, you know, I also got, I don't know what you call these, like these trays with the plastic covers uh, that I'm doing begonias in right now. And they seem to be doing all right in those. I think people collect plants for, for different reasons. There's obviously kind of the, the decorative or aesthetic quality of the plants, which I, I enjoy. Uh, for me, it's more about uh, the collectible component of things. And I really enjoy the challenge of, you know, cultivating plants in Southern California that, you know, you would only find maybe in Indonesia or, or you know yeah you know etc so you know you really kind of have to take extreme measures for them so you know for my begonias in that shelf in that tray for example I don't necessarily get to enjoy the aesthetics of them until I take the lid off which yeah. I do pretty regularly but yeah. um, you know a lot of 
I, I get asked that a lot, like, oh, well, why do you keep these plants in these closed plastic shelves when you never get to see them? And, and if anybody follows me on Instagram, they know I get to see them. I love taking my plants out. I love taking pictures of them. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, you know, I move stuff around quite a bit. All right. So a few things I want to note or point out about humidity is that, you know, if you notice Jake's room, it's, I, I guess it would be about the size of a bedroom, right? Or an office, right? Which is what that, that room used to be before he turned it completely into a plant room. You know, three humidifiers in sort of an office is, is a lot, right? He lives, um, I don't know how many miles, but he lives more inland um, along the coast of LA. So he lives a lot more inland than I do. So if he did not run any humidifiers, it would, it would get pretty, pretty dry where he's at. So that's kind of why he has a lot of humidifiers running. So it seems like he keeps his place between 55 to probably about 75% humidity. You know, if you look at his plants, again, we'll look at his plants a little closer on future episodes. Um, the aerial roots of his plants are just like, you know, going, going nutso. And that's because one, the humidity is on the higher side. And two is that a lot of his plants are in very, very close proximity to the humidifiers. The humidifier that he uses is the Lavoit humidifier. I recently got two of them myself and I, I like them. I think I've been using them for about several weeks now. You know, what, what makes them amazing? Uh, it's the, the automaticness of it, right? So they have sensors that detect the proximal uh, humidity around the unit. You know, you can set where you want your humidity to be. So, so that's what I love about them. Is there mist you know, more magical than another humidifier? Do they mist more or, you know, does it spread out more? No, it's really what you're paying for. And it is a good amount is, you know, you're paying for the automatic nature of it. And also the large capacity. I think it's about six liters or so in the tank. So you don't have to change or refill the tank as often as you would smaller humidifiers, right? So if you're looking for, you know, automatic, or automaticness <laughs> and a large tank capacity where you don't have to refill your humidifier all that often, um, you know, it, it's a really good choice. So that was the reason that, that I bought it. But just know that, you know, it is, it is a bit of a, a pricey um, humidifier relative to how, how humidifiers go. I think it's about 100 uh, you know, with everything on Amazon. So I did put a link... Um, in the description below to that if you guys want to check it out and buy it. But yeah, I, I really highly recommend it. I normally am really cheap uh, regarding, well, regarding everything. <laughs> but the reason why I felt that it was worth it was that I have cheaper humidifiers and I just I just don't remember to turn them on. All right, so, so that's going to be it for this episode. Again, this is like part one of probably 10 or something. Um, I'm still going through the editing. I'm gonna try to chop it up to to consumable <laughs> and and uh, uh, episodes that aren't you know ridiculously long. Definitely like, subscribe. Definitely hit that bell icon so you don't miss the next part of uh, this the the Jake series. <laughs> Till next time. Happy planting.